so you finished writing your app and it's ready to go, right? It might not be. Have you heard of performance theory and how to check that your app is at its best? My name is Joanna Smith and I am here to introduce you to the performance tuning lifecycle so that you will know when and how to optimize your app. The truth is that most developers don't think about performance until it has already become a problem, which of course usually happens when you're up against a deadline, the coffee is gone, and there's a weird man smell lingering in the office. But in times like these, keep calm. Don't panic because fixing performance problems is straightforward with the performance tuning lifecycle. There's only three steps, gather, insight, and action. Even if you've found your performance problem, it may not be immediately clear what is triggering it. And that brings us to phase one, gathering information. The easiest way for you to do that is to use a tool that gathers the data for you. Now, most tools are built for a specific purpose. Some are specialized for memory information or GPU performance or battery usage. All this means is that you'll most likely need to run several different tools in order to figure out what's really going on. The key to success here is knowing which tool to use to understand what data so you know where in your app to look so that you can fix your problem. But once you have all of that data, do you know how to read it? Most of the time you're going to be stuck with a bunch of numbers or lines or just junk that looks like Greek. So now comes phase two, gaining insight. When it comes down to it, you're trying to identify your problem out of a whole bunch of nonsense. So you might rely on these tools to help you format the data and make it readable, but even then, you need to understand what it means and how it applies to your app. For example, Heap Viewer may look really intimidating, but knowing how to read it will help you realize that all you're seeing here are bitmap objects lingering on the heap across activity transitions, and now you've got something you can work on. Now, unfortunately, steps one and two aren't linear. They're circular. This means that sometimes you'll open a tool, grab some data, interpret it, and that'll just lead you to another tool. Consider trace view, which may show you a horde of garbage collection events occurring during your scroll event. The insight here is that something is going crazy with memory, which means that you can switch over to the allocation tracker and see what's causing all the fuss. So by the time you reach phase three, you might be kind of tired, but take a breath. <sighs> because this step is often the hardest. Taking action. This is where you will move past all of those numbers and insights to actually go fix your problem. But be careful. Performance fixes aren't just about code. Of the three stages, this is the most human because solving the problem isn't enough. You need to solve it in a way that meets your coding standards and your design constraints and can be done under a deadline. So make sure that you have a plan before you run off and fix things. But now you're done, congrats! JK, you guys, because as long as your application is even a bit wonky, you'll be going through this life cycle over and over and over again on various parts of your code base. To get your app truly running smooth, every single piece needs to be optimized for performance. And that's why you should check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns resources to help you know what tools to use, what they mean, and how to solve your problems. And don't forget to join the Google Plus community as well, because you can get insight from other folks who have already had these problems. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.